well, here we are. It is going to be one of the biggest episodes we've done in this so far. We have a semi-final at Hamden, and then we have two games to win the league. But there's a problem. We played one game more than everyone else. We're only one point ahead. It's going to go to the final game. We have three games today, and let's get to it. This Clouds Gamer, my name is Duncan. Welcome back to the Elgar Experiment. <laughs> So welcome everyone, purely for time reasons, the fact we're going to three games today, I will not go into the highlights of each game, but we will quickly talk through the results. Last time we were here we had the massive 1-0 victory over Aberdeen, we then drew 1-1 with Clyde and our form has been patchy at best. We followed it up with a 4-2 loss at home to Montrose who are also in the race for the league title, four teams are. Uh, we had the double from uh, George Monday, they had to go from Pollock. Summers, and a double from Conley. Um, sorry. We then beat Adrianus 2-1, goes from Wicker and Anaku. Uh, got us that result. We then drew 1-1 with Rivals Peter Head. We equalised on the 89th minute. They have now been relegated, not because of us, but a game after that, to League Two, we then lost, very comfortably lost, 2-0 to Inverness. With two goals from Francis Okoronko, the guy who I tried to sign for us in the summer, Hogarth has broke bones in his hand again. He is out for the rest of the season. Uh, Molding get injured as well, but I think he is now back. I hope he is. Uh, Cove Rangers, we drew 0-0 with them, unfortunately, which means we have two games left in the league. We will be taking on 6th place, Queen of the South, and fourth place, Kelty Hearts. And this is the league table. Sorry, there was four teams in it. I forgot that they have now played a game to catch up. Uh, so there are three teams that can win this league. You have ourselves, 34 games played on 58 points. You have Clyde, second place, with a game in hand on 57. If they win that, they will go two points clear. And then you have Montrose, who have a game in hand over us. If they win their game, they will go on level points with us. And a better goal difference, I've just noticed, with two games remaining. We have, at the very least, however, made the playoffs. We will have more games come the end of the season if we don't win the league. We can still go up, it's just going to be a tougher ask. But first things first, we are taking on... Done the United in the semi finals of the Scottish Cup. Now, I'm not going to lie, I actually thought I was there on that day, and I'm not. I've just started recording it a little bit early. So uh, I'll be back in just a second when we will be taking on Dundee United and arguably the biggest game we've ever managed in the club. So, yeah, we are back, everybody. And one thing I had forgot to mention is that Harry Chisholm alone has it came to an end. He broke his leg for us in one of those games that I showed you. So Hearts recalled him from his loan. He's going about for four or five months. His season is over, unfortunately for us. Um, so yeah, we've had to make one change in the starting lineup from the last game that I managed. This is the same team. Well, sorry, two changes. Molden is replacing the injured Hogarth, and Hewitt is replacing Jack Stott today because I'm going a bit more on the defensive side in the middle of our midfield. So Molden and goals up. Back four we've seen most season. Freeman, Hamilton, Brown and Clark. Peyton and Hewitt will make up the midfield too. Coot, Whitaker, McKeever and Monday making up the rest of the squad. Somebody needs to drop out. Ide can drop out because he couldn't hit a barn door just now. He is shit out of form and is in the middle of a massive, massive goal drought. And this is the truth. There is no pressure on us today. It's a massive game for us. It's our first time, as far as I am aware, that we will play it in Hamden for a cup game of this magnitude. I don't ever remember Elgin City reaching the semi-finals of the League or Scottish Cup. And they've definitely never reached the fucking finals. So this is the biggest game in this club's history right now. And as you can see, Hamden is near enough empty. 
Uh, even Dundee United fans can't fill it. I'm expecting a really awful game for us that is going to absolutely shatter our morale, which will in turn absolutely shatter any remaining hope I have, which isn't much of us winning this league. Um, I know I've always said that I'm kind of not wanting us to win the league, but the financial reality is we need it. Um, the takeover has actually just broke down. It broke down just before I played the last game. Uh, the fans trust will not be taking over. The chairman came out and rubbished the media speculation. And when I clicked on um, the goals for us, like the five-year plan and things, uh, it said that the, the, the takeover is not any longer in process. So we are still under the chair, womanship I suppose, of Ayla Benzi, I think her name is. We're one nil down, three minutes on the clock. Um, yeah, not the great Freeman loses his man. The player of that ability is going to finish that all day long. We are 1-0 down. But realist, really, that isn't even the most important results. The most important results for us are on the top right-hand corner of the screen. The League 1 fixtures. I am hoping that we do not get a hammering here today. I think, from the players on our team... I think Freeman is former Dundee United. I know our striker on the bench, Naku, is former Dundee United. That is where he was before we signed him on a free uh, transfer. So we have a couple of former Dundee United players in the squad. Is Freeman former Dundee United? I think he is, but I'm not actually now. I'm doubting myself now, which is never great. Right, we need to just... Try not be a shit, if possible. But yeah, our bigger games today is we need to see Peter Head, an already relegated Peter Head, take points off of Clyde today. And I would very much like Inverness to take points off of Kelty Hearts. No, wait, that's wrong. I think I want Kelty Hearts to take points off of whoever's third, no? Shit, I can't remember now. Oh, I've been that focused on bloody Clyde, I never really paid attention to who's third. Montrose. It's Montrose, right? Kelly Hearts have dropped out of the race. It's Montrose. Who are they playing? Who are Montrose playing? Are they playing Clyde? No, I said Peter Head. Bloody hell, I don't know anymore. That's a good ball over the top to McKeever. First time ball in Monday. Doesn't win the header. Cut in the rebound. Ali Coote is former Dundee United. I know that, actually. Uh, Montrose are winning. Unfortunately, that would put them on level points with us and on a better goal difference. They would be sitting top... Of the league. Hewitt's give away a penalty. Because of course he has. Um, this is a VAR review. No penalty. Sweet. Love that. Um, it's very weird watching an old rival of ours. Because apparently we are no longer rivals. When we get promoted. Um, it's funny watching them. And hoping. And they're not praying that they can do us a favour and take points over clay today for us to then go and do the business in our two games. Which we won't do. We won't do. We are on such a downward spiral on form. And you've seen it all season. Like Our squad, how we are still before today's set of games, top of the league, beyond me. How we're even in touch distance to that title still is beyond me. We have been poor for a long while. But it is what it is. 25 minutes played. We are still 1-0 down. We've had two shots, not one on target. But you see that, though, that uh, Dundee United are absolutely dominating. Six shots, five on target, 6-6% six, six possession, 90% passing accuracy. They've had seven corners. They are all over us. We need to do something. McKeever, though, on the ball. Guess it, Max Clark. That last minute equaliser he scored in one of the games was his first goal of the season. Peyton to McKeever to Whitaker now. Has a shot from distance. Nowhere near troubling the goalkeeper. Comfortable in the uh, game. Surprisingly, Purehead have took the lead against Clyde. I'm probably going to jinx myself here, but their form hasn't been great either. 
Uh, they've had the chance to go ahead of us a few times, but matched our result when we've dropped points. Um, <sighs> Sibbled absolutely should have buried that. <sighs> Sibbled should have buried that. Montrose are now 3 1 up. McKeever. What a car! Just wide of the post. Those are the type of chances we're going to need to take today. So, uh, Sam had to be better in front of goal. You and you need to calm the fuck down. You, 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 and you have not been good enough. Who am I, who am I giving pass marks to? Ben Payton and Rico Brown. Nice. It's going to have to be a big second half for us. Could quite average granny shut that blind that is blinding me. As I'm getting a reflection off the window up the top of the hill. <laughs> I wonder if our brown's in relation to their brown in defence. I doubt it. We have changes we can make, but I don't want to make them just now because I don't think any of our changes are realistically going to be enough to get us back in the game. And it's to... Game is over for us. We will not be making the final. I'm not surprised, but we're not going to be making the final. I don't see us getting three goals. I don't even see us getting one. Truth be told, Montrose are absolutely running away with their game. They are winning 4-1. Clyde still losing 1-0. I'm kind of looking forward to getting the summer because we need to get away with from the style that we're playing. But we just don't have the players for it anymore, uh, realistically. We need to improve our striking options. We have a lot of work that really realistically needs done in the summer, but I am incredibly nervous about the, the balance and the, the wage budget we're going to have to do that with. Clyde have equalised. That is fine still. Not ideal, but it's fine. Right, cut heads are on. Right, we've got an hour on the clock. Monday has done nothing. Anaku will come on. Whitaker will come off for Jack Stott. They have scored a third goal. Which is horrific for us. Clark will come off for Riley. Gillies will come on for Freeman. Who is former Dundee United. He's had two spells at the club actually. Um, and Ali Coote will come off for Onyemachi. It's five changes. It won't make a difference. But it's 3 now. Let's try and just go a little bit more solid in the midfield. Have... Stott will still attack, but he'll do so from a deeper position. And Naku will still be leading the line, but from a deeper position. Um, and let's see if we can even get one goal. I, I would kind of take a positive just now. Uh, Sterling have pulled one back, but it's not going to make much of a difference. It's 4-2 in that game. It's really weird that we're in a semi-final of the Scottish Cup. And I still have to be focused on <laughs> two league games that are going on at the same time. Oh. Just trying to get a chance here. Peyton to Hewitt. Hewitt is leaving the club come this summer. Peyton to Hewitt. Ball to McKeever who is staying. He has signed a new deal. Which I believe I actually mentioned either in the last episode or the episode before. Decent enough tackle puts pressure on the defend the striker, sorry, missed the ball, but in the end they still get a corner. We have twenty minutes left of this game. And I would take three nil. Um I would I, I could live with four. Anything more, it's just gonna hammer us morale wise. Kelly Hearts are still losing. Not that that really makes any difference in our league chase. Um, 
because they are out of the running of that already. Oh no, they're not, sorry. They will be if they lose today, they're out of the running. They had three games left, not two. That's a good finish from one match. It's only second goal of the season. A guy who we are releasing come this summer is just not quite good enough. We thought he could maybe develop and become a bit part player, the same way they thought Davidson could. We also sold Davidson earlier on, but on your match will also be leaving. We need a refresh of our wide players. We also know that Wilkinson will be leaving, so will Whitaker as things stand. But yeah, the Inverness game, um, the Inverness results, sorry, just now, is taking Kelly Hearts out of the title race. They will not be able to win the league if they lose today. As things stand, I believe we are dropping to second place on goal difference. Montrose will be top on goal difference, equal points to us, with Clyde dropping to third. That is awful goalkeeping. Um, actually horrific. One thing I'm going to do, since the board have not been bought out or had the takeover done, I will be requesting, fuck, I will be requesting a new affiliate club. Clyde have just took the lead. We have two must-win games. We can't lose our next two games. Oh my god. That is awful for us. That's not going to be great. Uh, Kelly Hart's pulled a goal back. They've still got a few minutes left. Not much. And with this, we are hoping for the final whistle in our game. Unlucky team. We do not make the final. Dundee United will be in the final. We have lost 4-1 today. Uh, you, uh, I thought me saying you did yourselves proud would have been good, but apparently not. Let's not do that press comp, so I'm not in the mood. Let's then look at the league table, and it is worse than we initially hoped it was going to be. We are now third in the league. We are two points behind Clyde. We are fucking seven goals behind Montrose. There's two games left of the season, and if we want to avoid any playoff games, we need six points out of six. And we need to hope that Clyde drop points against either Cove Rangers, who are ninth, or Queen of the South, who are sixth. And we have to hope that Montrose drops points against either Peter Heads, who are bottom of the league, or ninth. Whereas we have to take on Queen of the South, who are sixth, and Kelty Hearts, who are fourth. We look like we are playoff bound, and that is terrifying. I guess the only good thing in theory is I don't need to come back for the next game. But I do because if we lose that, we're definitely not winning the league. Oh my god, right, okay. Join me in a couple of minutes, or a couple of seconds, sorry, as we take on Queen of the South away from home <laughs> as we try and fight back for top spot. We're back a little bit early because we've just got some of the best news we could have got our semi-final run in the Scottish Cup has actually just financially recovered the club. We have received 479000 and that is just of the pooled gate receipts and television money of the semi-final. That puts us back 200000 in the positive. We have made a profit of half a million this year. That is insane. The fact that we were down here, well under 400,000 this summer, uh, this season, sorry, and I went all the way back up and made half a million in profit, even after all of those losses, it's crazy. That was us minus 467,000. Minus 430,000. That is absolutely crazy. My fear of next season's wage budget is now resolved. 
for one more year, basically, because we're going to go into the negative again, shows you how important competition prize money is going to be for us. That's not even that's not even the prize money, but it shows you how important when we are able to get there that we actually make these finals. If we got to the final of the Challenge Cup, would we get anywhere near that money on gate receipts and prize money? No, we wouldn't. But we might just get enough to keep things, I don't want to say steady or, or like stable, but just enough to try and keep us above water. I still think we'll finish season on a, like, maybe neither breaking even, like hitting, not even breaking even, hitting zero. Um, but that is insane. That is actually insane. Fuck winning the semi-final. This, to me, is the biggest positive of today's episode. Even winning the league today isn't going to give me that same positive. In fact, uh, rules... Winning the league gets us £100,000. Us reaching the semi-final and getting our, our share of the TV money and the ticket sales is better than what we'd have got by winning the league. Financially, that was the biggest thing for us this season. But long term, we need to get promoted. So how do we do this without... I don't I don't know. Like, There's no way that we are ever going to have a squad that's capable of winning the league that by the end of the season won't cost so much more than £100,000 in wages. There's no chance. That's crazily bad. Um, so yeah, it just shows you, as I said, I think I said in the last episode, maybe the episode before, competition prize money and ticket sales is what is one of our three, if you like, pillars that is going to keep us from what we can do financially stable on top of player sales. So we had like prize money, competition prize money, we have player sales, we have ticket money. Just shows you ticket money right now is the biggest factor until realistic until we're in the top division in fact i'd argue that um yeah even if we i mean we would get more money if we get relegated next season if we didn't win the league this season um you know the championship level money is, is fine as long as we spend roughly about the same in wages that we are um but even that's not going to cover us for a whole season and then when we get to the top division that's where we start talking a fair chunk of change but yeah Join me in a minute as we take on uh, Queen of the South in the next game. So here we are for the first of two league games, and we're playing a wing play with no width. Just go with it. It is literally throwing shit at the wall and sees what sticks in these last two games. Uh, in goals will be Molden, back four of Freeman, Bimson, Bimson, uh, Brown and Clark. Peyton, Matthews, Stott and Wicker make up the diamond in midfield with Naku and Monday leading the line. Uh, the bench consists of Hamilton, Webster, Riley, Gillies, Onyemachi, Hewitt, Coote, McKeever and Ide. Uh, we have no width. Like our wide players aren't playing particularly well at the moment. McKeever's goal threat, he's had chances but not put in in the back of the net. We're struggling genuinely to score goals and keep them out just now so we're getting rid of her with we're still playing wing play <sighs> to an extent some of the the things that are there will still help us so direct passing pass at the space higher tempo the wide won't help us not with the focus but i'm just is a change of shape more than anything else in the hope that we will come up with something stupid that will just outfox Queen of the South, who are in a better run of form than us. <laughs> Unfucking believable. It's it, gen it is honestly to me crazy how our season has fallen apart in the league. Um, freezing gives away freezing. Freeman gives away a stupid free kick, but thankfully no booking. And all eyes fall on two other games, one of which is Clyde vs. Co Rangers, the other is Montrose versus Peterhead. Worker has a twisted knee. That isn't ideal. As things stand though, I'm not gonna make the change. I'm gonna see if we can play through it till half time. Mm. 
Matthews. Dispossessed. Dallas is breaking. Deflection. We try and get it clear and we just about manage it. Montrose have taken the lead at Peterhead as we expected. <coughs> they currently are four. No. They have they went clear at top three. Can't remember the exact points now. My mind has went completely blank. They've had a shot, but it goes well wide off the post. One hand, I'm kind of happy with how little uh, clear-cut chances they seem to have had. Freeman with the goal, so third of the season, gives us a 1-0 lead and keeps us in the title race as things stand. We're all going to make a change. We're going to go to a 4-2-4 in the second half. Kelly Hearts are absolutely running over the top top of Erdionians away from home. As I said, we're going to go to a 4-2-4 just now. Uh, Peyton and Matthews will absolutely keep their place. Where is Stott? Stott's had a poor game. So Coop will come on. McKeever will replace the injured um, Whitaker. And we will go with this. Where it actually will now give us that width that we didn't have fully. Other than Freeman and Clark being up there. We should now have two other options. Let's see. Let's see if this maybe makes a difference now. So it's a double change. We have three stoppages and three subs still to make if need be. But we are now trying to be a bit more attacking after playing a very strange first half of no width, but trying to play down the wings. Put a lot of pressure based on our fullbacks for it, but they seem to have coped okay first half. Um... Freeman being the one who got the goals for Coote has got down the wing, crosses it in, McKeever's there, back post, heads it over. That is kind of what we need from McKeever at the back post, but to get the shot on target would be a lot better for us, obviously. Freeman, Coote, got to give it back to him, Freeman loves the ball, back post, McKeever's there and he heads it down. After saying that he hasn't been scoring for us, he does today. It's his 14th of the season and it keeps us in the title race. Going into the last game of the season as things stand. Freeman with a goal and assist today. Freeman showing the qualities he has, which we all knew, or I certainly felt that he had, when we brought him in. Right, we're 60 minutes on the clock and I'm going to make a change. We're going to take Monday off for Ede. Both, well, Ede's on a massive goal drought, but Monday hasn't played particularly well today. Anaku has done okay. Let's see if we can maybe end Edie's uh, goal drought. Montrose are sitting 4-0 victors at the moment. That's a good ball. Edie didn't even win the header. If he did, I'd expect him to score that. I think this puts us on equal points with Montrose, but a massive goal difference to try and catch up on. In fact, they've stretched even more by another two goals as things stand. Freeman, Brown... Freeman has a shot, the flex is going to go out for another corner, it will. Right, come on lads, get a third. We can do this. Uh, not when you head it straight to Bernanukis. That's a good ball over the top. Good save by Molden. Fully expected that to go in the back of the net. Very relieved that it didn't. And Naku's now not having the best of games. This might be a decent time to change our shape for the third time today. And bring on an attacking player. Which we can't do. We could change the shape again that little bit. Let's keep things as they are currently. 
I thought I had Wilkinson on the bench. I forgot I didn't bring him. McMatthews to McKeever. Back to Brown. Bimson. Freeman. Payton. We're just passing the ball about now. Matthews. Gets the ball to Ide. Should have played it to um, McKeever there, but Clark's on the ball. He'll play it back inside. Bimson forward to Matthews. F oh, Matthews just ran out of trouble and Dallas is breaking. Get the block in. Get the block in. Good header away by Bimson. Still falls to a Queen of South player whose shot goes well over the bar. All that pass and play, but just seemed too scared to hit, like to, to take that kind of last pass in behind for the players. One or two times we could have got to McKeever who's running behind. Probably should have maybe done it on the other side as well with Coot. But good one by McKeever. Edie takes a poor touch, so we lose it again. For a five foot eleven guy, he is a great target man for me. McKeever loses out again, but Clark gets it. Anaku heads it all the way back to Brown. Anaku Matthews out to McKeever. Good play. Edie move. Bloody hell! I can't believe I've renewed his fucking contract. Edie. Cut across. And Aku! He makes it three. It's his sixth. It's his, it's his, it's his, it is his sixth of the season. Gives us a three goal lead here. I still can't believe I've renewed Didi's contract. It puts Montrose an extra goal ahead on goal difference, but we stay level on points. Clyde still drawing nil nil with Cove Rangers right now. Ourselves, Montrose, and Clyde are all on level points, and it is goal difference that separates the three teams. We are never catching the goal difference Montrose had, and we certainly won't now. Stephen Boyd has made it 3-1, getting a goal back for Queen of the South. But right now, goal difference is all that separates us going into the last game. Because of that goal difference, we go below Clyde again. Bloody hell. Freeman delivers a ball in the box. You're never really going to get a good chance from that deep. Right, Anaku, can he pick out somebody? Gets it to Kurt, crosses it in back post, McKeever. Heads it well over the bar. Still time for us to get another goal. I just don't think we will. Fucking hell, Matros have made it five. They're in absolute fire just now. Clark to deliver the corner. He does. Freeman's header. Oh, how did he miss? How did he miss? I really don't want the playoffs. <laughs> I would rather have won the league or not made the playoffs. I don't like the in-between. The board were happy. I, I promise I missed this. We, we hit the playoffs a year ahead of schedule, so the board are delighted. But Ide is breaking. Ide is still. Anaku tries to get it cut, but intercepted. But Anaukis hits the ball forward. There's a minute left of this game. Oh my god, defensive error after error, but we still keep the ball out. Bloody hell. And with that, the game will probably be over with this goal kick. And it is. Queen of the South 1, Elgin City 3, Clyde have drawn 0-0 nil, nil with Cove Rangers. This does go down to the last game of the season. If Montrose win their game, we will be in the playoffs. Ourselves and Clyde are on equal goal difference. If Montrose lose, but ourselves and Clyde are winning, it is all down to goal difference. It is going to be an absolute shit show, I think, on the final game of the season. And we have the toughest game possible for us. Out of all of the teams, we have to beat Kelty Hearts. One of them, I believe, have Queen of the South. And I can't remember if one of them have Cove or Peterhead as the last game of the season. Oh, it's going to be interesting. Join me in a couple of seconds. We take this right down to the wire. We are 90 minutes away from either winning the league or being going to the playoffs. I wanted to change our shape again. Wicker is injured. Realistically, I'm dropping him. Because I want him to be fit for the playoffs that we are most likely going to be in. So dropping him. But I didn't want to drop both our strikers. 
So we're sticking with this absolute monstrosity of a formation. Changes have been made. Stott will go into the number 10 position. Hewitt will take the number 6 and Ben Payton will just move up one. So we're going to have two ball winning midfielders, someone going box to box and Stott playing as a playmaker, which we've not really used much this season uh, in there. Will this work? God only knows. And probably you, so we're going, no, it's never going to work. You're not winning the league. Let's find out, shall we? 90 minutes determine if we have anywhere from no more games to at mo most what, four more games of football this season. No, no, maybe six more games. I can't remember how the playoffs work. I remember how they work for the top, going out the top division, but not the other ones. It really is make or break. We will have to watch the other team's results while focusing on ours. Our form is woeful. We should have won the league and we didn't. We dropped a lot of silly points before our form really went off a cliff and it has left us where we are. And all we can do now is hope for the best. But we can win this game. At least I know Inaku will run it at the channel, so it does give us a little bit more width if we need it. Freeman wins the ball. Matthews breaking forward. He is going to go box to box. He's got to get it inside to someone. Cuts it all the way back for Hewitt. Oh, Hewitt's got to be hitting that on target, I'm afraid. Good bit of play. That gives me hope. Freeman heads it forward, but nobody's out to win that. Which we know is going to be the case. If they're hitting, if they hit long balls to the wings and we win the header and hit it back, nobody's going to be there for the second ball. We know this. That is an issue where I'm... That's a part of the pitch where I'm essentially giving up possession. We know this. I need my wing backs to, my centre backs to be strong. It's a goal kick for us. I'm shitting myself. Every other game is still... Nil, nil. Right, Freeman has it. Why we had it long? Tend up within two passes back to the goalkeeper. God only knows, Brown. Awful ball back to the keeper. Doesn't get anywhere near him. They intercept, but thank fuck they put it wide. Right, Molden's long ball. We don't win that one either. We feel like we're getting completely boxed in. And I am not a fan of that. Should be dominating the middle of the park, and we're not, and it's infuriating me a little bit. How have we lost the runner? It's 1 0. This is the worst possible. Thank fuck it's offside. Oh, God. Clyde have took the lead. Right now, Clyde are winning the league. Ball over the top. And Naku, good touch. Oh, he's got to finish that. He'd done everything so well. I know he's got a finishing of seven, and I shouldn't expect better. But when you take a first touch like that, when you get one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and then you scuff it wide, it's heartbreaking. Freeman to deliver the ball. Monday picks it up outside the box, gets back to Freeman. Peyton, Matthews shot from distance, well over. Never going to trouble the goalkeeper with that. Cove Rangers have took the lead. We need to get our arse in gear and get a bit better. How we're playing just now, we will be changing shape. Can we get a goal though? Clark, Peyton. Clark, right foot swings it in. And Aku... Kinda. Oh, he doesn't eat the one at header. He's got to oh, Anaku. Monday. How do you miss from there? Come on, Hewitt. Out to Freeman. Freeman hit it. Cuts it back to nobody. Come on. Fuck's sake. And now they've got a corner. We are creating the chances. We're just not putting them fucking away. Right, good save from the corner. 
Good save from the corner. Right, Monday wins the ball. Peyton. Clark. Now Hewitt. Matthews. Gets it to Freeman, who's going to run out of the space. Tries to cross in. Comes off the defender, goes straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. Oh, that is a goal this time. It's 1-0, Kelty. Oh, shit. Yeah. This isn't working for us at the moment. Shit. We are going to have to make changes at half-time. We're going to have to take off our top goal scorer because he's playing horrific. Ede couldn't hit a fucking cow's arse with a banjo. Right now. Can someone mark Landers? For fuck's sake, Montrose have equalised. This isn't ideal. It's half time. We are fucking woeful. And we know it. Hewitt is coming off for McKeever. Monday is coming off for Coot. And now Coot is going to have to lead this line. And it is what it is now. Coot will come on. Alan attack. Swap these two around. That marks. You are defend. You are stopper. Let's go. We're making two changes. Let's hope this kind of works in our favour. Anyone else is getting a little bob button. Freeman is. Like, I need you to be doing better, pal. Come on, Elgin. Let's do this. Don't make me go through the fucking torture of playoffs. Cut. Cool. Stop. Matthews. Gets all the way back to Molden. Long ball forward. Cut doesn't win it, but Stott does. Stott. McKeever from distance. Stott really hasn't been on the ball much for his first half, but I think that was down more how we were playing. Freeman. Stott. Kurt. Shot from distance. Troubles absolutely nobody. I don't know who the fuck thought that was going to be a good idea. Clark tries to hit the ball long, but it just goes to nobody. Come on to fuck, guys. Mason hits the ball long. Oh, we've gave away a fucking penalty. Bimston's gave away the penalty. And it's two. We're going down to two now. We had the chances first half. We should have been like three up first half for some of the chances we had. And Naku missed a good chance. Monday missed a sitter. Freeman crossed a box full of our players and picked out no one with a simple back pass. Freeman and Naku back to McKeever. Shot goes in from distance. And it gives us a lifeline. I am still making subs up. Riley is coming on for Clark. He's having an awful, awful game of football. And so is Freeman. So so is Gillies coming on. We have one more change we can make. Oh, fuck. Brown wins the ball. McKeever can't get to it. But they pass it up play anyway. Come on, guys. <sighs> Queen of the South, I need you to do me a solid and get a goal back to give me any form of fucking belief. Come on, demand more. Come on. A buttons I've been trying not to use because it's not going to be in the next fucking game. Clyde don't deserve to win the fucking league. Oh my god, at least equalise so it doesn't look so fucking bad. 
Oh, a hole. We have been top most of the bloody season and we have thrown it away. Oh, it means we are absolutely playoff bound. And because we are third, do we take on second or the team that's getting relegated? We've lost the fucking league. Oh, we've lost the league. It hurts. We weren't expected to win the league this year. We finished roundabout, kind of where we were predicted to, be honest. But we've fallen away at the end of this season. And that fucking just stings. It absolutely stings. We are playing Montrose in the semi-finals now. Clyde of Crowd Champions, we'd receive 70 grand. Air United are taking on Kelly Hearts, we take on Montrose. Is this a two legged affair? Is this a two legged affair? Yes. Is the next round two legs? Genuinely, I don't know. Uh, the relegation playoffs. <sighs> I don't know. I'm the wrong bloody rules for a start. Yeah, it's a two-legged. Fail. We have four games and we'll do them all on Friday. Let's see if we end the season in League One or the Championship. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a thumbs up. This really stings today. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.